our Hope Sunflower to go with the rest of those. Keep in mind, thank you, Janie, if I hadn't say that already. Keep in mind that if you sprinkle and let uh, other, your friends and people on your Facebook um, know that we're here and we're painting pretty things, come back and let me know that you did that. And um, is there anybody else who can't hear? <laughs> uh, let me know that you did the sprinkle and thank you, Jill. And then um, we're gonna draw a name and we're gonna gift this lovely piece of art to someone. All right, hey, Sheila, I'm doing good, how are you? So again, I already traced it, so let's just get right on to our background. We're gonna use the same colors. Not frozen on my end, so I'm not sure what to tell you guys. My end looks good. Probably storming. It's raining here. It's been raining most of the day. Thank you for the sprinkle. So I'm using this desert blue and white. And I'm gonna use a big brush so it doesn't take three days to get our background going. Okay, everybody can hear me. All right, so again, just like the last three, if you didn't uh, watch the last three, this is our third Wednesday in a row where we're doing um, a little sunflower with some words. So you might wanna check that out. If you don't follow my page, make sure you hit that like and follow button so you can see what we're doing here all the time. So basically, I'm just gonna add this white to my background. And I do about a quarter of my page. Of my page, it's not page, a quarter of my canvas. And then we're gonna add our blue in. Get that white on, really nice. All right, so I'm gonna get that blue, and I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna hit right on the edges of that first. And then we'll just kind of blend that in to whoop, the rest of the canvas as you see fit. So however much or little blue you like. So, is anybody on here who already received uh, one of the gifties of Sunflower that we sent out? We mailed out two prizes. One was the Faith and the Love Sunflower that were gifted. And um, we'll be gifting this one as well. Hey, y'all. Yeah, it's been yesterday, oh my gosh, the last couple of days it's been crazy rainy. I'm go into my blue, we'll fill in. So I like to add my white first so it kind of blends in and softens that blue. If you're new here, if you're new here, let me know. Say, give me a thumbs up or a heart or something, let me know if you are a new watcher like to say hello to you guys. Yay, Kelly! Kelly got faith. Gotta have faith, faith, faith. So let's get this done. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so I can do the top. I'm just gonna go in with my white again. Oh, Connie, that is so sweet. Hey, Pammy. Aw. How are you? I'm following your house redo on the Facebook, and I'm loving it. Loving it, loving it. I know you are, too. I know you love that kind of stuff. So let's just get the white on. Work quickly because you want that white still to be wet when you start adding in the blue. All right, so 
So don't dilly dally and don't try to be perfect. Just get it done. We'll go into our blue just a little. Around our petals. I like it to be a little darker right around the edges, so and then kind of fade that color out. But I also don't want it to look like it was outlined, so we're going to bring some of that blue over and have highs and lows, etc. I'm going to keep turning it. Thank you for the stars, Christine. I'm going to get those sides as soon as I get this top done. I don't want my, my top, the top part of my canvas to get too dry. Just keep blending. So I'm gonna finish this up, get right in between with my white. Get all that white on really speedy. Oh, I see some grossness here. What is happening? Let's get that off. It's that older bottle of white. Bottle of red. Ugh. Let's get a little bit of blue in there before I have a fit. I love the sunflowers on the teal. I don't know if y'all have seen the last few we've done, but I love the combination of those colors so much. All right, so that's good for me. <clears throat> and let's go here. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of this white on the side and a dab in just a smidge of that blue and we're gonna hit these sides as well. So it's continuous. So it's kind of messy, just like the top. Just a real quick little bit of color. Nothing fancy about it. Just make sure it kind of blends in on the top surface. So again, we're gonna go in with white. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing. My iPad's lagging way behind for some reason. Let's get a little bit of blue. Do, oh, um, I forget already, it's gone so fast, but I forget who said this, but somebody said they wish theirs had more movement. Do less. Um, <laughs> somebody put their uh, brush in their coffee. Do less brushing around. So the more you swish, 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 thank you for the stars, guys. The more you swish and swish, the more blended it's gonna get. So you can see I'm spending very little time doing that. Just get it on. Because if you just keep going after it, thank you, Nene. If you can just keep going after it, it just starts getting really blended. And that's when you have that blended look instead of the texture. So I am going to hit this. Uh, I probably would. I normally only paint my canvas if the color on the top is, you know, is pretty dark. If it's a light color or white, I don't paint the sides. But it just, sometimes, honest to goodness, it just depends on my mood and whether I'm giving it away. <laughs> Because a lot of my art, I just don't worry too much about if I'm doing it on here. I just want to show you what I'm doing on the top. <laughs> I hate when that happens, dipping your uh, paintbrush in your red coffee. So we're going to get this dry so we can keep moving. I really need to get my new heat gun back. I think it's in my car, and for some reason I cannot get it in this building. 
Okay, I think we're good and dry. I want to make sure because I'm going to transfer. You're welcome, Belle. I want to transfer the word hope. Probably, Judy, I would probably just put one of those alligator hangers on. Do you know what I'm talking about? When I say the alligator clip thing, just hammer it in right on the top. And because this is a small, lightweight canvas. Thank you, Susan. How are you? Thank you for the stars. So I'm going to grab my tracer. We're going to put this back where it goes. And now... I am going to transfer the word hope and I'm going to take this down again I still don't have my tape <laughs> I wish I could tell you how many times I oh that's a terrible piece of tape um, how many times I've done that uh, dipped my paintbrush in the wrong water or whatever I know this looks crooked, and it is, but I want that hope to go straight down. So we're gonna work with it. I'm gonna slip, thank you, this one, or these. <laughs> I love this one too, it was gifted to me by a friend. Someone very sweet. So I'm gonna transfer the word hope. I've put my graphite paper under my transfer, or under my tracer, and I'm gonna use the stylus just to go over and trace, <coughs> excuse me, trace the word hope onto my canvas. So give me one second because it's hard for me to talk when I'm doing this because I have to hold my mouth right. Y'all know how that goes. I think I need the other end. I always feel like I'm working with the fat end and I twist it and I'm like, no, that's the fat end. They all seem like the fat end, I think. So just trace around your letters. Oh, last one is my E. We're gonna go all the way off the canvas and off the canvas. Let's take a peek. Oh my goodness, girl, I feel ya. Did you have COVID or is this just issues from just health? So it looks like my hope looks good. It's on there really nicely. So we're gonna move on. I had health problems, uh, lung issues so bad after I had COVID. I still feel like I don't breathe good. I don't breathe good. I don't breathe well. I don't breathe good. That's Mississippi talk, y'all. <laughs> yes, this is an 8x10. We've been uh, using that size all week. So I'm going to put this behind me. And we're going to get started. I'm going to start with, I'm gonna just add some color to my palette. I'm gonna start with brown, because we'll just do that little brown center as well. We're gonna use brown in the middle. I have three colors for my sunflower. One is a pale yellow, it's called Crocus. Then we have antique gold and terracotta. So I'm gonna put a little bit of those colors on. There's my Crocus and my just health issues. Yes, Donna, I've done that before too, and I do that often, the uh, using the graphic pen, but uh, I try not to do, I try not to cheat too much when you guys are watching me. There's some terracotta, and I'm gonna save the green for last. We'll do those leaves. Thank you for the sprinkles, guys. So I'm gonna grab up my round brush. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is a number 12 round. It's pretty big. So this, it'll make this really nice and easy. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna color in. Oh, oh my gosh, Susan, I had no idea. Why didn't I know that? I'm gonna use my mid-tone of the three sunflower colors. I'm gonna start with 
my antique gold, and I'm literally going to just very sloppily trace in or paint in one that first coat, bring that out a little, on my sunflowers, okay, just on these petals. So I'm just gonna really just get that on without worrying too much about what it looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you get a little skippy, don't worry about it. We're gonna come back. This is just kind of doing a little ground coat because we are gonna use all three colors in our next coats to give that sunflower the detail that it needs. So I'm gonna just go around the circle, fill it in, See how I'm just going all into the inside of that uh, middle too, so don't worry too much about that. We're gonna put something nice and pretty in there. So that is my petal. That is a leaf. I think I have three leaves, let me see. I do, I better look and see where my leaves are. So I know that that's a leaf, and I know that that's a leaf. And I think I didn't, I didn't trace that. Oh, I see it right there. I just, I painted over it with the blue. So I'll need to correct that. So here. When I'm making these tracers, I'm like such a kid, like tracing and coloring. It's like coloring in a coloring book. And I enjoy that so much. I wish I had the time to like color in all my tracers, but sadly I do not. It does take a while. So I think, let's see. We had a little bit of a petal there. I'm just ad-libbing because I'm not sure what happened to my leaf. Leaf. So just going to Make it work. So I'm gonna rinse this, and we're gonna do that first coat on our green as well for our leaves. Leaves, leaf, leaves. So I'm gonna use my lightest color green. I have a dark green and a light green. This is Thicket and Hauser Green. So let's get a little bit of this light green, and I'm just gonna base in our, using the same brush, kind of like to pull it back to a point. I'm going to base in that leaf. Let's, I got to figure out where it was. I can kind of see it. I'm thinking it was like right here. We're going to make it work. And then we have one here. And one here. Try not to get my wrist. And thank you for the shares and sprinkles and stuff. Thank you for letting me know because we are going to pick someone to be gifted. I'm going to come down this stem a little with my light green. Oh, me too, Judy. Coloring and painting and watercolors. That is all I wanted to do. Okay, so this is our initial colors, okay? What we're gonna do next, though, is dry these, and then we are going to add our details. We're gonna use those same colors again, along with some other colors, and we'll add in our detail work. So first off, let's get it dry. Shouldn't take but a second. Hey, Christy. I am on one day a week on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central Time. I still love crayons, too. Let me just say this. If I get, if I go to a restaurant and they have coloring pages for kids, I'm all about it. Oh, my gosh, Pamela. I had no idea. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my goodness. Long COVID. I had long COVID too. That's nine months it took me to even feel like a human again. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of a smaller brush than the 12. It's a little big. This is an eight, but it feels icky. I think I ruined this one. I'm so bad. I'm such a bad girl. We'll go with the 10. Just need it to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go with the 10. I love the smell of crayons too. Oh my God, that's hilarious. We're just a bunch of children, aren't we? I'm gonna start right here by this leaf. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go back into that original color again and just very messily add that same color back. I'm gonna work on two petals at a time, okay? Because you wanna work wet on wet. So you want those that base coat color to stay wet while you're working. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab up some of the lighter color. And I'm gonna go on this side, on the left side of that petal, just blend in a little bit of that lighter color. Then I'm gonna offload that a little bit. I'm gonna go into this terracotta color. I'm gonna get that blended into my brush really well. Then I'm gonna go on the right side and just make sure you blend that in so it's not a hard line, okay? So you want a light coat of that color, but you don't want it to have a hard line. You want it to blend in with your other colors, all right? Can you see how I did that? So we are just gonna continue on, I'll offload. That means just wiping it off, and I'm not rinsing, I'm just wiping off any excess. So I'm gonna go in and we're gonna do two more petals. Start with the antique gold, which was our original color. I'm gonna go into that lighter color. We'll do one side with the lighter color. Then we'll come in and get a tiny amount of that terracotta. And we'll do the other side with the terracotta. I think that was fatter. And if you look like you're having, you're creating like a harsh, hard line, just blend it in, just keep kind of stroking it, and blend it in to your next color, okay? I don't know why I rinsed, I didn't mean to. Let's see, okay, so we'll go back in to our antique gold, and we're gonna do a couple. We're just gonna continue doing a couple of petals at a time. That way we know we're working with wet paints. All right, so the lighter yellow on the left side, kind of blend it in. And on the left side, make sure it's kind of blended. Then we'll get our terracotta, just a tiny amount, blend it into that yellow and do the right side. Now that side looks pretty harsh. So I'm just gonna keep brushing it, move it towards the center until it kind of blends in. So there's what we have so far. It's gonna be so pretty. All right, so we're gonna go back into the antique gold and just continue with the process. That's a teeny tiny one sticking out. So we're gonna do three petals this time. I'm going to go into the light yellow and we'll do the left side, blend it out. And I'm going to move over so you can actually see what I'm doing in my palette as I'm working. Make sure you can see. So now I'm going to go in to the terracotta, just a smidge on my brush. And we'll work that in. See, I was running my mouth and let that dry up a little. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that antique gold. 
and work that one petal again. I don't mind. I don't mind it. All right, so we're just going to keep going around and around and around. So let's get this one, and I'm going to just do two again because obviously I'm not working well with doing three. We'll get our lighter color, lighter color, and we'll pick up a little bit of white. Now we'll get our terracotta color. And we're going to keep going. And don't worry if they're not all exactly the same. They shouldn't be really. They're petals and they should have some variety. So don't stress if one, like this one, has a little bit of a darker streak to it. Um, um, you know, they're not all going to look the same. So don't worry about things like that. So base color again, we'll go into the lights. And we'll pick up a little bit of white. Now we'll go into the terracotta, blend that in. So it's not quite so harsh. It was harsh anyway. I'm going to offload. Just kind of keep brushing at it till it's blended in and there's no defined line. All right, we're almost there. So we'll do this one with the antique gold. And this one. Go into the lighter color. Do a little bit of white as well. We'll get a little terracotta on this side. Again, just blend if it's harsh. So the colors just kind of run together. Two more. I feel like we're doing uh, like exercises. One more, two more, three more. Um, I've almost always just done one day a week. Sometimes, you know, in the past, sometimes if I just get froggy or if it's like a special holiday or something, I might do like um, multiple days in a week. But for the most part, I try to go live consistently, um, so I don't know. Sometimes I get a hankering. And in the winter, it's, it's I know it's not winter yet, <laughs> but in the winter, it's super hard for me to go live multiple days a week. I just threw a little white in because it's dark when I leave work and I'm by myself. And the parking lot is kind of dark, so I don't like to put myself in that position where I'm worried about, um, you know, leaving the area by myself. I'm going to grab a little bit of white on my brush mixed in with that yellow just to make an almost white yellow. And I'm just going to come around and just hit... The tips of these on the left side just a little with oh don't get paint on with a little bit of that lighter tone just to highlight them a little give them a little balance I love this that looks so good okay I'm gonna rinse that we're gonna do our leaves so I'm going to scooch you over. We already have the Hauser Green. So I'm going to add the Thicket. To my, type, to my plates. 
And I'm gonna start with the same color we painted them with, the Hauser Green. I'm just gonna fill it in so it's nice and covered. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that dark green thicket. I'm gonna hit one side. Then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that white, blend it in on your brush so it turns into a lighter green. And then you have kind of a three-dimensional little leaf there. So it just really makes that leaf pop. So let's go. Try to keep my hand out of the wet paint. So bear with me. I'm gonna to try to paint this one with the original green. Then I'm gonna grab up some of that darker color that's the thicket. And we'll hit that right side. Then I'm gonna grab a little white, blend it in with your brush so it kind of turns into that green. And we'll hit that side. One more. I don't know why. Somebody said something. <laughs> Somebody said something on somebody else's live recently about how annoying it was that she was being sing-songy. Like, she was like doing what I do all the time. And I thought like, you know, when you sing your words, like, oh my gosh. And I thought, oh my Lord, I hope that woman doesn't come over to my live because I feel like I catch myself doing that all the time. So she's gonna come over here and be mean to me. We'll grab a little bit of that white and we'll do this side. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that dark green and just come up that stem a little, even though we're gonna paint it black. All right. Now I'm just gonna, I'm not even going. Thank you, Penny. My comments keep going away so fast. Thank you, Barbara. I have this traditional burnt umber on my plate too, and we're just gonna dab that in the middle. We're just going to, and I, my brush was all dirty with yellow, but we don't care. We're gonna add some really pretty beads to the center of our sunflower. I can hear that it's raining outside, which makes me sad. So while that's drying, I'm gonna get some black on my plate and we are gonna fill in those words, all right? So there's my black. I need a smaller brush for my words. So I'm gonna use this liner brush. It is a size I don't know, but it's the same size as this one, which is a one. So this is a one, little baby eyelashy brush. And we are going to fill in the word hope, all right? So I'm just gonna go into my black and I'm gonna have to kind of be a little bit quiet to do this because I'm old, my hands are a little arthritis -y, and if I talk, sometimes it tends to mess me up. So hang on. I have to hold my breath. <laughs> I have to hold my breath so I don't mess up the words. I'm sure if you could see me, my tongue is probably out, probably biting on my tongue, holding my mouth right. So let me get this done. There's our H. I'm glad this is not a long word. It'll be three days in here. All right, so this is the skinny part of our H that I made really fat. So when you trace these words, it's kind of like just filling in, like coloring in with your paintbrush because there's a fat part and a skinny part and you just want to follow that line. Oh my gosh, it is raining so hard. Oh my goodness, I hope my internet holds up. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Dina. 
That's funny too, Kelly. Me, probably me too, which is a good reason not to have the camera focused on me all the time. Because I'm, my tongue is probably out, especially if I'm being quiet. You know that tongue's sticking out. Okay, I got through that O. Let's get that P done. Filling in my little blanks. So we'll go up and around. It's really important to have a good brush to do this with, guys. Um, if you um, take care of your little liner brushes, this will work really nicely. If you're like me and you let them set in water, and get, you know, janky hairs, then you're gonna be on the struggle bus having a decent liner brush all the time. So don't be me. Clean your brushes and set them to dry so that they last longer. I am terrible about just walking away and leaving those in the water for two days. Terrible, I'm telling you. That worked. Wow. Maybe it was my confession. All right, so I'm going to do this little loop. And voila! Look! So cute. Love it. All right, so let's get this dry. That's still a little wet, too. So let's get this dry and we can add our beauty parts, our pretty stuff. You absolutely can use a Posca pen to do your lettering. What you want to avoid is a Sharpie. Sharpies will run when you pour resin on them. I have, Cheryl, I have done that um, several times. I have to do that. I just wait until I have five or ten that are jacked up like that. Actually, Christy Hawkins is who taught me how to do that. And just blow up some water, stick them in there, swish them around for a few seconds. And um, I forgot what I was going to say. And then um, they'll straighten up. But, yeah, I'll always wait until I have several that are messed up. Okay, so now I'm going to use my pen. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I like to use my little pen because I'm terrible at fine line lettering because I'm shaky and my hands are stiff. So I like to use this pen. It comes from Hobby Lobby. It's called Master's Touch Graphic 0.5. You're going to find this in the art department where the markers are, not in the craft area, okay? So I'm going to use this just to do quick stroke outline for my sunflowers. Okay, so I like just quick strokes, not even trying to be perfect and stay in the lines. Just want to give it a little definition. Boom, boom, boom so that we can see the lines between our petals. So the sloppier you do this, the better it is, I think. So we'll do our petals. We'll do these petals. And then I'll show you kind of what it looks like. We're gonna go down into our word as well. So just kind of 
very messily add in a few lines here and there. This works really well if, there's a hair, if you did a poor job of um, following your tracer lines because it kind of gives you that grace. So here's what it looks like once you add the lines. See what a difference all that makes? Look at the hope. Keeping it kind of loose and messy. Hi, Rose. I know you can't hear me, but hey. Okay, now we are ready for the good stuff. I have two cups ready and they're marked out at a half an ounce of each and what we're going to use is two different things we've used both of these on the last two sunflowers one is bee treasures glass seed beads in the color autumn and these are bee treasures check seed beads in the color the sea so we are going to use that and i am going to use some glue in the center to Ugh. just keep those in place while we're because they're round beads and we don't want them rolling all over the place and I do want them to have some texture some dimension I don't want to just one little layer thank you Sue um, so we are going to add that glue so um, oh I think I already have these in a cup so it kind of holds everything together so we're gonna just add a few of these. These are the ones called Autumn and they have orange and green and some pink and purple and yellow. I'm gonna add what I have in my little cup from that. And then I'm gonna use the sea cheese beads. Seed beads. We'll pour those in the cup. And we're gonna sprinkle these on the other side. Now these have some big old pieces in them too that I like to try to avoid, like pieces like that. I don't really want that or that in there, but I am gonna let the rest of them stand. This is so pretty, I love these colors. And I'm gonna show you this close up. I'm just gonna leave those in here for now and I'll clean that up like top. I want to show you this close up and see if I can show you without. Look how pretty. That is our sunflower center. Now I am going to put this on my blocks to elevate my canvas. In case we have drippies. And. I'm going to add some clear glass to the bottom. So this is just uh, clear crushed glass. I sell this in my store at artshatter.com. Aileen's is having a glue sale. Awesome. So we're just going to, I'm just going to randomly sprinkle on some of this clear. I'm not trying to do anything specific. I do not want it on my word though. And we'll just spread it out kind of loosey goosey. And we're ready to mix our resin. I like it to be loose and crazy. Um, I don't like a straight line. I want it to be organic. So that's why we do it that way. So let me get my gloves on and we We'll mix our resin. Y'all know I use Art Resin exclusively. You can buy Art Resin from artresin.com or you can get it on Amazon. And I do believe that Hobby Lobby actually still, it really does, doesn't it, Deborah? Hobby Lobby still carries Art Resin in small quantities in their stores. So, let me get these gloves on. I have one box of gloves that are super big and one box that are like super tight. So let's get this party started. Okay, again, Art Resin is a two-part resin. 
These bottles are so gross. Two-part resin, resin and hardener. We are going to use a 50-50 mix. Thank you, Sue. And we're gonna do a half an ounce of each. So I'm gonna pour a half an ounce into my cup very carefully so I don't go over. So that's the hardener. So next we will, these bottles are so nasty, y'all. Look. Thank you, Jamie. So now we're gonna pour the resin in this one. And then we'll mix them together in a separate cup. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So now I have just this other cup to mix them in because there's not enough space in these cups for mixing. You need to have as much space as you do resin. <laughs> my hair's in my mouth. So I'm gonna grab my stir sticky thingy and we are gonna dump both parts, the resin and the hardener, into a separate cup. All right, make sure you get it all out so you have equal parts. You don't wanna cheat yourself and end up with a mess. So get that all out. And we'll get it all out of this one. Don't forget to sprinkle this post or this live for the opportunity to be gifted this very sunflower. We will um, put all the names in a hat, metaphorically, and uh, we will draw a name and someone who sprinkles and comes back and tells us that you sprinkled will be gifted this lovely Hope Sunflower. So, we are gonna stir for three minutes. If you're ready, Sue, I'm ready as well. And now's a good time to ask me questions because I've got three minutes of time. Uh-oh, it says broadcast interrupted. So, let me see. I have to keep touching my screen when I'm trying to read comments because it wants to go away. So. Any questions about what we're doing here? Any questions about the sunflower? I'm so excited. We have a, a new kit in the works and I'm super excited about it. It's gonna be a, an Amazing Grace cross kit that we're gonna be um, launching. And we have a limited supply as always. And so when they're gone, they're gone. So we will be letting you know when uh, those are released. So I tell you who's gonna be the first to know. My group is gonna be the first to know and then we are going to be sending out a mass text. So if you're not on my text list, you need to get on that text list. I do have, Nay Nay, I do have a sunflower kit, not like this, but it's a pumpkin and a sunflower. If you go to artshattered.com and in the search bar type in kit, you'll see two separate kits that we have available right now. Thank you, Cynthia. Fantastical, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, the words, uh, all the words, if you're in my group, you will get all the words. Uh, if you're not, you will you do have access to just the first one, which was Faith. Uh, there's a free download on this page for that sunflower. So we're going to stir this for three good minutes. I don't know why my comments keep going away. Uh, Tammy, it takes eight hours to dry to the touch and then about 12 hours for you to be able to pick it up and move it around, but 72 hours to fully cure, okay? You're welcome, Angela. Thank you for the stars. So stir, stir, stir. Mix it up really well. Don't give, don't cut your time short because you could end up with 
an unmixed portion. I have to keep touching my screen. Thank you for the stars, Pamela. I missed that somehow. My comments go by so fast. Thank you, Sue. My comments, I can't keep. <laughs> if I missed your comment, I will come back and answer it. They just keep disappearing and I keep having to like reboot my app, my iPad to, to see them. So I will answer your questions. Thank you, Tarita. So I am gonna pour this resin. I'm just not pouring it. I'm drizzling it first on my little beads. All these beads, by the way, guys, come from Hobby Lobby. And I always wait until the bead treasure beads go on sale, half off, and then I stock up on all the pretty beads that I like. So make sure you wait for that sale so you can get beads at half price. So now I'm gonna drizzle on the glass that I have at the bottom. Sure it's all covered. And let me scoot that one in a little. That one's sticking straight up, so let's lay him down. And once I get all my that one's sticking up too. Once I get all my glass covered, we will take the rest of this resin and I'm just gonna scrape it out of the bowl and drizzle it all around the rest of my canvas. So we'll put a little bit here and a little bit there. scrape it out. This is why you also want to make sure you mix well because if you're going to scrape out all that delicious goodness, you need to make sure that you have properly mixed. All right, now I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to use my gloved hand to spread my resin. So I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm going to take all this resin that's pooling up around the sunflower head and pull it towards the edge of my canvas. Pull, pull, pull. So the whole canvas is covered. Now, if you do this and then you come back the next day and you see that there's a little bubble or a little skippy spot, don't stress about that. That happens to me every time, all the time, not every time, but all the time. And I do not stress about that. It is a art form, it's a man-made art piece, and the quicker you stop expecting everything to be perfect, the happier and the better off you're gonna be. None of my pieces are perfect. I've shown in my group, in my membership group, a hundred times how um, some of my art pieces look close up, and I'm telling you this right now, not one person has ever turn their nose up at a piece of my art because it had a little pinhole skippy in it. So give yourself some grace. Stop expecting perfection and embrace the imperfection. There's a some sort of, I don't know what that was. All right, so I can see that it's all covered. So I'm gonna just run my finger around the edge I want to make that kind of for me I don't know why I do this but it makes me feel better like everything's all the way to the edge and it's not gonna like roll over the edge I need to scoochie that up some all right so now everything's covered I'm looking at it from an angle I don't see any skippies that don't mean there won't be any when we're done when it's dry because sometimes they just sit 
Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna use my heat gun to pop bubbles. And just run your heat over the top of your resin. You can do this two or three times. So the goal is not to burn your resin though. You want to just randomly move it around, keep it moving, don't stop in one spot. You want to keep that heat gun moving and you'll be able to see it popping all those little bubbles that you created when you mixed your resin, right? Alternatively, I like to show both sometimes, you can use a heat gun, okay? You can use this big old monster jama or you can actually use like a creme brulee torch and just run it across, pop those bubbles, be done, voila. I think that's just the light because the upper left corner is fine. It might just be the light. Let me do this again. Okay, look at here. Don't forget to sprinkle the love, let your people know we're here and someone will be picked as a winner for this lovely piece. They're all, all the drawings are random, guys. I don't pick and choose. Uh, they're all random. Let me get some of this resin off my fingers and then I will turn the camera up. I don't wanna get resin on my phone. I have resin on my fingers. So, uh, you know, Christine, the heat gun versus the torch is just a personal preference. Personal preference. So, thank you for the sprinkles. Thank you guys for letting people know that we're here. That's how, that's what keeps us coming back. And again, if I missed your comment, please don't stress. I will come back. Let me, let me not be upside down. Hang on a sec. Hang on. I got to figure out how to do it again. Boom. Okay, there we are. I will come back. I am going to have dinner, but I will come back and answer questions this evening. But I wanted to show you how much bead. See how thick my little pile of beads are and my glass. Lovely, I love it. So I will post a picture of this tomorrow. Hang